Welcome back to the show. According to multiple reports, the first from Larry Brooks, the Rangers have reached an agreement to hire Gerard Gallant as their new head coach. Many NHL insiders confirming this news as well. He just got back from the World Championships, EJ. He's a great coach, took the Golden Knights yep. to the Stanley Cup final in their first year as a team. Obviously, he's got a good track record, but what makes him a good coach for this particular version of the New York Rangers? Well, it, it will be interesting because the Rangers are kind of a, are a kind of little bit of a mixed bag because they have all these really young players they're trying to sort through to figure out where they fit and, and how they're going to continue to develop. And they've got some really good older players, you know, like the Breadman and Mika Zibanejad and, and, and a couple of others. So uh, they're in more of a win-now mode than they were, let's say, a couple of years ago when they hired David Quinn and they sent out the letter. The letter. The letter. So things have changed with those signings. <laughs> They're looking to accelerate the success on the ice. You like that, Panger, right? You like a little bit of the letter there. I, the letter. It's the a, letter. The letter. Yeah. It's like Bruce <laughs> Springsteen's letters from you. There you, know? you go. A wonderful yes. album. But that's on our next episode of NHL <laughs> Now. But for this one, Panger, I, I, listen, he's a really good coach. I think the challenge will yes. be again for the Rangers to figure out those, those really high-end young players they have, figure out where they fit and get winning in with this group of really high-end veterans that they have as well. Maybe if David Quinn didn't get this team to where they are right now, and, you know, the previous management regime, yep. uh, including our good friend, you know, John Davidson. The big uh, boy. But I, I think the big, big boy, we're ready to roll. <laughs> but, but I think that because of that development, EJ, I think that... You know, that is why you, you, you knock on the door of a Gerard Gallant. Yep. Gerard Gallant is a different coach than David Quinn. They, they're different people. Yep. They're different in the way they approach the game. And they're different when they look at you, too. And I'm taking nothing away from David Quinn. I'm just merely looking at Gerard Gallant. I'm looking at Gerard Gallant as a hockey person, an old-school hockey guy. Um, all of his best friends, all the guys he lean on are guys that, you know, he played with or guys that he played against in that era. He was a tough, rugged player. I played against him. I know him extremely well. I love the way he coaches. I'm shocked and surprised that franchises have dismissed him like they have. Mm. I, I think that he is, he just thinks hockey. You know, that's what he does. He thinks hockey. And you can throw some numbers at him. You can throw some things. But at the end of the day, he's got a feel for a heart, the pulse, what you want to do, what kind of player you want, what kind of player you are. You know, do, do look into the eyes of the opposition and, and, uh, and stare stare right through him or you, you kind of look away like he feels all those things he sees all those things I think he is an excellent choice for the New York Rangers when you look at the New York Rangers EJ it was a bit of a weird season right Panarin leaves the team for a little while they had the Tony D'Angelo situation they fire their coach they fire their front office because it felt like ownership thought they should be further along than they are for me watching the New York Rangers I felt like they were actually maybe a little ahead of schedule when they started going on a winning streak where do you see the Rangers how far away is this team in that division from being a real competitive playoff team I, I think there's still a little bit away just because again I go back to sorting out those younger players where do guys fit what are you going to do with Zibanejad he's in the final year of his contract he's into his late 20s now he's had some terrific seasons in New York he's a high-end sentiment when he's going well this season in particular played great against Philly and the Island or should be the Devils and yeah. some of those teams at the bottom of the East didn't produce as much against the Islanders and the Penguins and some of those teams at the top so now you're, if the Rangers, you're looking at this, if you're Chris Rury and you're saying, okay, he's going to be a free agent. We need a first center. Do I sign him for seven years? And if so, what's the money there? And then I got all these younger guys that are coming through my organization, particularly on defense. So there's a lot to manage there. I think it's a great situation to be in, Panger, because to have all those high-end mm -hmm. players is what everybody wants. I'm sure Gerard Gallant was drawn to this <laughs> job because oh, yeah. of the opportunity to be really successful there. But I do think there's a lot of sorting out to do, and there might be some moves that have to be made by the management group, by Chris Drury, in terms of moving some guys to add pieces they need. And I think Gerard Gallant, who was part of a Vegas Golden Knights situation where they started from, from scratch, so to speak, and got all the way to the Stanley Cup final, I think his uh, understanding, like you talk about, his knowledge of the game and mm -hmm. who are the guys that can help us win, 
Who are the guys maybe we need to move out? I think that could be invaluable for the Rangers moving forward because of the number of really good players they have within their organization. Yeah, EJ, I think it's also an essential decision by the New York Rangers to get this deal done, especially if you're leaning towards a veteran coach like Gerard Gallant and not maybe a coach that's newer to the NHL from the American Hockey League or from collegiate hockey or, or wherever. Um, this is a veteran established coach that likes certain players. So whatever you're going to do now, you've got the brain of Gerard Gallant yep. as you move forward. You've got, you've got a, a, a coach here where you're a manager like Chris Drury, a former excellent hockey player that gets the nuances of the game. And you're going to be, you're going to be basically saying, okay, Gerard, let's, let's start talking the build here. Gerard Gallant has proven to be a great four line coach. There was no fourth line in hockey that came out and played as hard and has as much confidence. And you can ask the Ryan Reeves and the William Carrier of the Vegas Golden Knights, which coach gave them the most confidence in their career. It's Gerard Gallant, who, who, who would sit, not sit, but not put out their top players on an offensive zone face-off late in a hockey game. Instead, he kept the fourth line out. He gave them confidence. That's what he does. He gives people confidence. He's not afraid to kick you in the groin. He is not afraid to punch <laughs> you in the gut. But he's also great at putting his arm around you and giving you a let's go. I need you. Let's get her going. So I guess uh, getting back to the New York Rangers, you know, the decisions are plentiful. Um, Zibanejad's a big decision, but who, 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 what, is there somebody going to replace Zibanejad? Yeah, that's, that's, that's where some thing. of these teams yeah. get in a pickle. When you, if, do you have another idea? Is there another guy you want to get? Um, yep. For example, when Doug Armstrong was looking at his center ice position, he, you knew that he knew Ryan O'Reilly was a player that he could maybe get from the Buffalo Sabres. You know, so do the New York Rangers think they could get somebody? I'm not saying from the Buffalo Sabres because there happened to be one there, hmm. but I'm, I'm just saying what's the next guy if you're not yeah. signing as a banished yet is what I'm saying. So, yeah. And I think that's where a, certainly a guy like, uh, like Gerard will have a, a big hand in that. Well, there's a lot to like about the team he's taken over. Yeah. First overall really pick, is. Alexi Lafreniere. Mm -hmm. A second overall pick yep. in Capo Caco. A goaltender that has really transitioned very well with the yep. departure of Henrik Lundqvist. Oh, yeah, and the guy on the back end, Norris Trophy worthy. Candidate, yeah. Adam Fox. Uh, so a yep. lot, of, lot of pillar pieces, yeah. uh, as we like to say, for the New York Rangers. Uh, It'll be fun to see Gerard Gallant behind the bench again. Yeah. To me, I don't know, I'm, this is just me from the yeah. outside and covering the final the year that it was Vegas and Washington. As much as he's a veteran coach, he also seems like he's a player's coach. Like, it yeah. feels like he has a way about him totally. that is very likable. And, and I mean... We, we forget, like, we called the Vegas Golden Knights the Golden Misfits that yeah, year because yeah. they were a bunch of rejects that came together and, and really, you know, got, he got so much out of that roster. No and I think about it. you got to be, you know, a certain personality in that particular situation where people might not be feeling super confident yep. because they were, you know, huh? left expendable, I guess. Yeah. But would you say that's true, Panger? He's like a player's coach? Well, I, I, absolutely. I think because of the way that he played. I mean, there's, there's a certain honor that uh, Gerard Gallant or uh, Rick Tocchin or uh, Craig Berube, certain players uh, that, that played the game with, with great honor but with great integrity, and, and they did the little things so well, and, and they also appreciate that from third and fourth line players. But going back to your misfits, um, <laughs> I don't know. They had some pretty darn good they players. Those, those weren't <laughs> misfits for they me. Yeah. They Man, called themselves Stay that. Feed or just... Alex Tuck. You know, yeah. No, I know, I know. And But that's, it, what I'm doing is I'm backing you up because – he was able to take some star players, some high-end skill players, some guys that maybe you would think were selfish players, but they became better rounded players. And then he was still able to get the third and fourth liners. Nope. No, nope. I think I we might have lost Panger there. No, I, would, I would just add to that is, that is the experience level too, because <laughs> He's coached as the, the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. He's coached as the head coach of the Florida Panthers. He's coached as the head coach of the Vegas Golden Knights. So that's a lot of experience. And I always find, like all of us, yeah. repetition, doing a job, having opportunities. We get better over time. I see this with coaches all the time. I've talked to guys after they've been let go, and they're like, oh, I would have done this. I should have done that. And they incorporate that moving forward. So I think Gerard Gallant brings a world of experience to this now. He's been really close, got to the cup final with that Vegas team that you mentioned. And uh, I think he's ready for this opportunity, and he does have a lot of high-end players there. It will be interesting to see the decisions that Chris Drury and company make as the Rangers continue to build this team. But they've got a lot to work with.